Well, this one sucks. Yep. Yeah, Rhea Ripley, unfortunately, was announced going into the show. Uh, PW Insider reported that Rhea Ripley had suffered an injury, and she was probably going to be going on to Raw to announce that she is injured and is going to have to vacate the title. And that is exactly what happened. Welp. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Anyway, I am Luke Owen, D-A-D. I'm joined by Pete Quinnell. Dan, uh, Dan is on holiday mm. this week, taking a bit of time off from all of the wrestling that he's been watching. And he's got to recover from his terrible performance on the Monday Night Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not here today. Pete is filling in for him. But welcome to the Rest Talk Podcast. Please do press the subscribe button. And give us a little thumbs up. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts on this episode of Raw and the... Uh, the, the Rhea Ripley situation. And if you're watching live, join in the live conversation. Uh, join the rest of the SWAP Nation and let us know what you think of this. Uh, and yeah, if you want to your thoughts read out on the air, wrestle.com forward slash support. We'll read out all of them above the five US dollar amount. And a big thank you to this episode sponsor, the Wrestling Masterclass. We'll have a little bit on those in a little bit. So Let's talk about this Rhea Ripley situation. Let's. So yeah, PW Insider reported going in that she uh, has hurt her elbow, as, as her shoulder rather, she, mm -hmm. she's hurt. And from what Fightful Select have said, it came from last week. So funny, because like, in the reports it was, um, oh yeah, she got suffered her injury last week. I was racking my brain being like, mm -hmm. what happened last week mm -hmm. that would have like got her injured? Because she came out for a promo mm -hmm. with the Judgment Day, but she didn't have a match. She didn't do any like big in-ring angles. And then it was like, oh yeah, live through that chair at her. And so what happened was, according to Five Wall, uh, is that live through the chair. And when Rhea Ripley went into the wall to sell the chair being hit at her, she injured her shoulder. Mm -hmm. Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Radio is saying that it could be sort of six to eight weeks recovery time. And then once you get through the injury and sort of injury rehab, three months mm -hmm. so she should be back by SummerSlam time mm -hmm. and yeah it, it, Rhea Ripley opened the show uh, with her arm in a sling looking very very sad because she just come off that incredibly hot Wrestlemania match with Becky Lynch uh, she was going into year two of her title reign she came out and she I'm right here she doesn't look pleased but man at least the set looks cool <laughs> The smaller set was used again this week, set. which I think is so much better. It is much better. Um, but she said that she's going to be stuck on the bench for a few months and she needs to vacate the world title. The crowd chanted BS mm -hmm. uh, at this. Uh, she laid the belt down and the crowd chanted, thank you, Mammy. And she said that this is all part of Liv Morgan's revenge tour and she blindsided her like a coward. Uh, but this is a warning, whoever. Whoever is going to win this, I'm coming back for blood. And I'm going to have to be locked up if I see Liv Morgan. Mm-hmm. Liv Morgan's music hits and she comes out cackling like a mad bastard in kind of the most brilliant way possible. A proper like, ah, like proper maniacal unhinged laughing mm -hmm. that she has ended Rhea Ripley's title reign. And the security kind of separated them away. Rhea Ripley headbutted one of the security guards and then backstage she walked to the Judgment Day. Judgment Day all hugged her and priest was like you know what when you come back you're gonna be more of a badass than ever and she was like great just make sure that judgment day stays on top while i'm gone and then she walked into the sunset mm -hmm. i i would imagine she'll be kept off tv now until she's ready to return from injury i'd hope so that yeah. is what i would do yeah I, I think you want to save that return pop until the right moment but um yeah your thoughts on on the news and and the, the promo and, and and everything I think it's very interesting because typically when uh, when people have to vacate their titles, it's normally like quite like a, a very sad kind of somber mood and whatever. But Ripley was just kind of pissed off. She was fired up, kind of from her being like, this is BS. I don't want to see Liv Morgan. It very much felt like this is an angle. Like, I'm not saying the injury is an angle. Obviously, it's not. But I'm saying like the, the vibe of this segment was very much like this is a scripted segment to do to further this angle we have we have factored this now into a story exactly we've now made this into a story rather than this is my emotional goodbye and i didn't get to do the the ending of this title feud like i wanted the, the title reign like i wanted um which i think is interesting if like the the common rumor that people have is that Liv's going to be turning heel from this um despite the fact that she's kind of justified um 
she's going to be turning heel, and when Ripley comes back, she's going to be a mega babyface going up against Liv Morgan, which I think should have been started here if that was the case, with her being very humble, very like, no, I uh, couldn't have foreseen this coming, I'm really sad that I don't get to continue this title reign, blah, blah, blah. That, I think, probably would have lent itself to a bigger babyface return when she does come back. Having said that, if Liv Morgan is just insane and, and a great heel while she's gone, that return pop's going to be huge regardless. So it doesn't yeah. matter. I think this is going to be one of those situations where the crowd has dictated mm -hmm. what is going on. It's not. I, I don't think they had Liv Morgan turning heel in their plans or like Rhea Ripley turning babyface within their plans, but the crowd has kind of decided, no, we're going to cheer Rhea Ripley now, mm -hmm. and by extension, we're going to boo Liv Morgan because we want to cheer Rhea Ripley. Mm -hmm. Kind of like with the, the Nia Jax thing. It's like mm -hmm. Rhea Ripley sort of accidentally turned babyface in the build for that. It's like, well, we want to cheer Rhea Ripley because we really like her and she's incredibly charismatic and she's incredibly over. And I think that's... The, you don't have to change anything about their characters because the crowd have decided who they want to cheer and who they want to boo. So you can amplify Liv Morgan's uh, unhinged nature, but you don't have to do too much mm -hmm. with the character. You don't. She doesn't have to be this weird heel. She doesn't have to be overly heel. The crowd are going to boo her anyway because she has taken out Rhea Ripley, and Rhea Ripley is going to be more over as a babyface because she's going to come back having gone through back from the injury to then take out uh, Liv Morgan. They announced later in the show that we're going to crown her new champion next week, with no information on who. Is 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 it a tournament? Is it a match? Is it a battle royal? Is it a, a scramble? Is it a nothing of that? So we don't know who's in it, what type of match it is. They just said we're going to crown a new champion next week. I don't week. think they know. I would wait. I probably didn't. I so the the story is. I think Peter Insider said they knew by last Wednesday mm -hmm. that Rhea was hurt. Right. And then they would sort of evaluate it throughout the week as to whether or not she needs to vacate the mm -hmm. title. And then the decision was made. Yeah, you do need to vacate the title. But yeah, I think you're right. The fact that, because it's very unlike the Triple H era to just say, this... Sorry, is it a new era? <laughs> I know you've not been on the podcast for <laughs> uh, doing Raw. Hey man, I was on the WrestleMania review podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, I you, heard it enough times. You heard it twice, I suppose, <laughs> in those opening promos and then throughout those shows. <laughs> um, but yeah, like so I don't think they fully know no. what they're doing. I think the only thing we could probably guess is it's probably going to be Liv. I would assume so. It's the person that seems to make the most sense right, right like now. It's, it's the one that sort of adds up because yeah. you give Liv a few months run mm -hmm. and then you can build to the Rhea Ripley return match yeah. and then she can go, those two can fight over the title. And then you can go either way. Either Rhea beats her and wins it back or Liv actually retains over Rhea. That would be the more the more shocking choice. Yeah, and yeah. the revenge tour, like Rhea's like, oh, I took my eye off the ball and blah, 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 blah. But there's there's both avenues there. I think that would be a really compelling title match if they do end up going with Liv here. Because I think the perhaps the issue they've got now is that outside of Becky Lynch, no one really feels like they're over at that level to mm -hmm. be the, 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 the women's world champions. Kind yeah. of what the same problem they got on the men's side of things as mm -hmm. well is that, you know, it's if it's not Drew or Punk... It's like, oh, everyone else just sort of feels like a, an upper mid carder going for this belt. But like Drew, Punk, and Cody are like tippity top guys. And Seth, I, I would consider, is up mm -hmm. in that echelon as well. And I think you've got the same thing with the women's division. Mm -hmm. If it's not Becky, you know, Raquel is, well, she's still out injured, I suppose, you know, injured to a degree because of with her, mm -hmm. her flare up and stuff. Nia Jax, maybe. Mm hmm. But that's it, I think. Like, yeah. It's not Natalia. It's not Maxine. It's not Ivy Nile. It's not Chelsea Green. It's not Piper Niven. It's like, there's a load of like girls in the roster, but none of them feel like they're at that that upper echelon. Not, not, even, not, not even, yet. Not yet. Not even like a Baszler or a Zoe Stark or mm -hmm. anything like that. You can do it, but you haven't got the time to build those people because yep. you just need one of them to be that champion. Mm -hmm. And by that extension, unless you draft someone over from SmackDown, like a Tiffany Stratton, for example, or mm -hmm. a Jade Cargill, it kind of has to be Liv Morgan. Yeah. Unless emergency ripcord, NXT call up, because that is the way to have like a shocking title win that will surprise people is someone who you were probably going to call up in the draft anyway. You're just like, well, we'll just call them up early and we'll just have them win first night, like a Lyra Valkyrie or someone like yeah. that. Just be like, we were going to call her anyway. Do it now and have a shocking thing. Yeah, uh, that'd, be, that'd be fun. I, I wouldn't hate that at all. Yeah. Like as a name, because I think that's a, that's a good idea in terms of I didn't 
foresee that, didn't think of that. And I think that's a, that's a really good way out of this situation. Mm. The, the thing, I suppose, the, the, the question you've got now is, and this is only we'll probably not know, is how long Rhea is going to be out for. Because you think back to when Seth got mm-hmm. injured in the, the Jinder Mavals match. And um, that was a case of, if it's any longer than this period of time, we are going to have to vacate yep. the belt. But it turned out he was only going to be out for like four weeks or so. And so like, that's fine. He's not booked for the Rumble. He's not got, and he just won't have a match at Elimination Chamber. Yep. Um, and I know there's a lot of people like, well, she can't defend the belt for 30 days or, you know, whatever stipulation I want to put in. But like... 30 days is nonsense. That's nonsense. Yeah, and, and I don't even want to... Because people say like, well, Roman didn't defend the belt for 130 days and he got to keep on his belt. A more pertinent example of this is EO Sky. Mm-hmm. EO Sky had two title defenses between October and WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. She defended it in October. She defended it in January. And then she defended it at WrestleMania. It's not uncommon for, particularly in the women's division for these belts to just go undefended for a while. Mm-hmm. So is it? Did, do you think that they needed to vacate the belt? If she's going to be out of action for three months, did they need to do this or could they have found a way to get around this? I don't think they necessarily needed to if it is going to be three months. If she's back for SummerSlam, I don't think they needed to make this choice. I don't hate it personally. If it was right before Mania... I'd have been like, oof, that's rough timing. And maybe I could have understood it more because you want a title match at WrestleMania or something. Here, it's not a bad time to vacate it. She did her year-long title reign. She did, you know, mania to mania kind of thing. That was like a, a really solid title reign. She got great matches in that in that reign. This isn't necessarily a bad time to end it. And if they want to keep a champion, it's better to have a champion around than not. So if you're going to make that choice, then maybe now's a good time. But if you've set the precedent that champions don't have to defend all the time, then Ripley doesn't have to defend all the time. Yeah, I, the the counter to the argument, I suppose, would be is that while it's not being defended on TV, it is on the house shows. Mm. So like EOS guy, yeah, sure, she defended the belt twice in or three times in six months or whatever it is. Which is on the house shows all the time. She's on the mm-hmm. house show loops, and the belt's always featured on the house show. So if you feel that, that you need the belt as part of the house show circuit, along with your world heavyweight champion and your IC championship mm-hmm. and your tag team titles, as a way to sell tickets and get people into the building, then yeah, I suppose you might think, well, I probably do need to get this belt then because we need that for the the, the house show, the live event market. And also, I think it's a different thing of the champions not being booked in title matches versus the champion can't be booked in title matches. Yeah, because it's know? harder to write that story of right. like, what do we do then with this division if you don't have someone who can who can't defend this belt for the next three months? Yeah. And and I'm not necessarily saying that they made the right choice, but I think that uh like I say if you can't book that that champion in the in this time period while they're off injured, then having somebody else take that slot and potentially getting a better story out of it with that new champion while Rhea Ripley's off recovering is not a bad idea. And in the example of like Seth, who was injured but didn't vacate, they had a direct plan for WrestleMania. And that was their big thing is they needed this plan for WrestleMania. So I can give them a bit more leeway because they had they needed Seth to defend his belt at Mania. They wanted the Drew thing, etc, etc, etc. With Ripley, what is she... The big thing was Mania. What she has going forward is like, well, do they have any major plans for her? Like, it's the Liv Morgan revenge tour. Was right? like that's the next thing that's lined up. Because it might not yeah, have even been which that be, crazy. It would have been the backlash match, right? And it wouldn't have been that insane for Liv to win that match. You know, like that is a total possibility. So maybe they didn't have any major plans. They're like, well, we can actually afford to vacate it at this we point. Can, yeah, you maybe you're right on that one. If if they you know they had decided, oh, Liv's going to win the belt at backlash, and I was like, well, you know, we'll just accelerate those plans mm-hmm. a little bit, and we'll just put the belt on her now, yeah. and then we'll just wait until Ripley comes back. Uh, to do another thing like it's yeah. I'm, I'm curious i'm seeing a lot of names here julia Russell was a name there which is mm-hmm. like it's a really that's fun isn't it? it's a fascinating name to just mm. throw out there as well like i kind of love it to be like yeah yeah why not yeah like, screw it screw it particularly as well because with like rossi's uh like the marigold promotion and mm. stuff and like and all of a sudden the wwe women's world champion is is appearing as part of that promotion it'd be like i mean it's great for them it's kind mm-hmm. of great for wwe as well uh, and perhaps this is going to be an absolute minefield for uh, our mods Mm -hmm. so I'm going to apologize up front now chat write a name (laughs) 
write a name of who of who you think could be the next champion. And if our moderators can then pick out four of those names, we'll create a poll from those four names. Okay, sure. The ones that come up the most. Yeah, exactly. If like if you if twenty people say live, lives in gets into the mm -hmm. poll. This might end up being incredibly messy for the live chat, so I'm gonna apologize to our mods now. But hey, have fun. Yeah, have fun. See, look, I mean, uh, Brandon's well into the idea. Uh, Harry loves it. Uh, all of all of the moderators love it. Great. The mods are well on board for this. Yep. Great. No possible downside. <laughs> There's no possible downside yeah. at all. But yeah, I think just overall, I think this kind of sucks for uh, Rhea. She was on such a good... It's weird to say she was on such a good run because she was through WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. But like, if you kind of look back on her entire year as champion, it's like I, Natalia, Zelina Vega, <sighs> Becky... But Nia Jax. You're forgetting, Luke, that in spite of those booking decisions, she has become a megastar. Well, that's it. That's what's going, and that's why I feel like you can say she was on such a great run, even though she was statistically she wasn't right. But she was on a great run through the crowd exactly. response to it. Like she had just gotten over because she's just got aura and presence mm -hmm. about her, and she was going to go on to this next big stage of this run. As I kind of said in my um, the predicting WrestleMania 41 way too far in advance, I thought she was going to hold the belt till next year. Mm -hmm. Like next year's WrestleMania, I would have had Rhea Ripley still as champion, and maybe she will be champion by next year's WrestleMania, and just sort of just go back to that plan mm -hmm. but um we'll, we'll certainly wait and see uh while our moderators are dealing with the the chaos that i have just thrown into the live chat um you're lucky i didn't say poopy people would have <laughs> what uh, this is from the um the the, the emergency smackdown podcast oh days. i see yes uh because the rock was doing so much call and response thing i said if i just say poopy then the live chat will say but <laughs> <laughs> Let's get one. And they in. did. And oh well, oh they did. Yeah. Uh, let's get into your thoughts on this subject. Restalk.com forward slash support. We'll read out all of them above the five US dollars. Oh, we have got our four. It is Naya, Liv Morgan, Jade Cargill, and Roxanne Perez. Mm. Those are your four. So Fun let's chance. so now chat, you can stop posting names. Britt Baker, Seamus. <laughs> like you can I, stop. I did see uh, apparently in the, the moderator's chat they said uh, someone said Jordan Grace. And now I'm like, oh, I want that. Yeah. That's the right choice. Yeah, it's, that's actually a really good choice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go and vote in that poll now. Let us know what you think. And if you want your thoughts read out on the air, wrestle.com forward slash support. James here said, Rhea's injury, as well as being very disappointing, also effectively turned Liv Morgan into a heel. She tried to justify her actions, but the crowd weren't buying it as Mammy is so popular. I wonder if WWE will read the room or endeavor to keep Liv face. It feels like Damian Priest needs to move on from the Judgment Day to fully develop to be a star. Without Rhea, he's now surrounded by serial losers, which does not help his credibility. Balor needs a change in direction so maybe it is time to split well i think that we're heading in that direction with other stuff that happened on this show and i think that Rhea's injuries actually opened up a door where she's like make sure judgment day is on top and they're gonna not exist by the time she gets back i think 100 percent they will not be together by the time that she gets back uh to, to answer your question james of though like you know do you think the wwe will keep it i, I mean i think the, the show itself kind of showed that Liv morgan's promo later on in the show was heelish yep. it was not it was. a baby face promo it was a it's that justified heel of don't boo me i'm mm -hmm. right yeah exactly and that's yeah. that's great and i think that's gonna be i said this in the edited review i think there is a certain ceiling to baby face live morgan mm -hmm. but there's a much more open sky to heel live morgan who's a bit unhinged uh chris here said with Rhea out for a while becky off on vacation which is contested a little bit mm -hmm. so uh, Fightful Select had reported that she was going to be taking some time off uh, after WrestleMania, and I think that's been proved correct. She's not been on TV for two weeks. But it wasn't like she's taking a lot of time off. And then she's been announced for the European tour. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be back soon, because the Soonish. WrestleMania tour is like in a couple of weeks. So, yeah, sometime. Uh, this highlights a real lack of star power on Raw, where I can only see Nia Liv or Longshot Candice LeRae winning next week. Candice Ray's a real long shot. That is a long shot. Uh, but we do have a goddess that happens to come from where Raw is where, next week. Where is Raw next week? Well, going by this, it's Columbus, Ohio. 
Oh, well, that one check out. Because yeah. this is from Chris and it is about Alexa Bliss. Of course. Um, if she's ready for in-ring action and she's capable of carrying the division despite what some say, that's in your mind, Chris, uh, if you add in the howdy return, it could happen next week and the draft is time for Alexa Bliss to return, not just to WWE, but the top of it. Next week, will uh, the pop will be punk levels. Mm. Uh, also, going to get your opinion on why the women always have to vacate the titles when the men don't have to. Is I just say it's a co- uh, men... I'd say it's just because the men have a mid card to change things. I, I think it's it's circumstantial. The, the Ray situation and the Seth situation are very different. Mm-hmm. Seth was only going to miss four weeks of action. Yeah, one of those was a show he was not already not booked on, and the other one was Elimination Chamber, which he was booked on. But they were like, "Well, we can change those plans." Um, he will be back in time for WrestleMania. It mm-hmm. all depends on how long Rhea is going to be out for. Yeah, I yeah. I don't think Alexa Bliss returning is going to get punk levels of reaction. It'll be a good pop, but it's not going to be punk levels of, of pop mm-hmm. um and yeah if it, she is involved in the wyatt six stuff i'd keep her off tv yes because i, I think well. you want to debut that group as a whole as opposed mm-hmm. to just bringing one of them in now because you need to plug a hole yep kuzu said it's kind of crazy how both Liv and Rhea got the same injury and both had to vacate their titles as a result of it in kayfabe they even did it to each other it's nice that we have another blood feud in the women's division after the damage control story agreed agreed and aiden here says Liv got runner-up in both the rumble and the chamber so i'd have a gauntlet match and have Liv get the runner-up on that too getting runner-up a third time plus the crowd reaction is what can fully turn her heel hmm it's interesting yeah i'll do this one as well from wet day timetable who said uh nice promo there's two kind of people those who care about Rhea and those who just want to see her get revenge now i then finish there's two kind of people those who fear nijax and those who learn to fear nijax isn't that four kinds of people (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah yep i suppose there are four kinds of people in the end unless of course the two kinds of people also have same so (laughs) the venn diagram's a circle exactly yes (laughs) The two, there are two types of people, those who care about Rhea Ripley and those who fear Nia Jax. <laughs> and those who want to see Rhea get their revenge and those who need to learn to be afraid of Nia Jax. So there are still two types of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Brilliant. Uh, let's get into the rest of the show. Continue voting in our poll, although Liv Morgan is winning in a landslide by the looks of things. Shocking. Uh, so we opened with Too Many Lambs! Too Many Lambs! Ho! Seamus made his return along with. It's a shameful thing, lobster heads. Mm-hmm. Sort of. Started with the old yeah. intro. The big drums and yeah, the. Yeah, yeah. And then. Too shameful thing, lobster head. Shameful thing, lobster head. So, yeah, it was. Seamus is back. He's got with him his old theme. Sort of. It's a bit of a remix of his old theme. And he was taking on Ivar. And I was like, wow. This is going to be a heavy hitting match, mm. and it wasn't quite that in the end. It was like it, it was it was the showcase Sheamus match. It was a showcase Sheamus match. Like this was elevated by the crowd. Like this was a hot Montreal crowd. And sure, they was were hot. super into Sheamus wrestling. Oh, yeah. And you know he did the second rope white noise and stuff, and he hit the bro kick for the win. Like this was not uh, Sheamus v Gunther, like or like Sheamus v Edge. But man, it was it was good. Yeah. And, and I'm and I'm really glad to see Sheamus back. Yeah. Uh... I don't think I like his little shorts. Oh no, he's, he's, got, old, he's got his old Seamus O'Shaughnessy shorts. Yeah, Seamus O'Shaughnessy. Yeah, I, do, I don't know if I like him. No, no. There's no, little tidy whities instead. Mm, yeah, no, well, not necessarily white, <laughs> but yes, I think I prefer him. But wasn't he the great white something? Wasn't that his thing? He was. He was the great white. He's just great white because <laughs> he's white. You see. <laughs> They got him to not tan and stuff. So yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. Whiter and whiter. Yeah. Casper after a while. Ridiculous. Um, um, but yeah, old theme's back. That's cool. Um, Tempest in the office said he absolutely hates this song. So he's like, <laughs> no! <laughs> Why is it back? It is, I mean, I, I get a bit of a kick out of how nostalgic people right. can be for, for old themes. It's yeah. like the people who want to see um, Drew's old theme come back. I'm one of those people. But like his current theme is so much better. Uh, I thought about that. It's great. But broken dreams, mate. Yeah, it's a, such a fine song. <laughs> so, I guess that's why I don't get the nostalgia for it because it's such a fine song. It's good. <laughs> it's real good. Man. Like I'm, I, so I'm not. I was like, oh man, bring, bring back no more words. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not. Having said that, when he Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy came out to, yeah. dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, I was like, Whoa! <laughs> that's music that I recognize from my childhood. 
Uh, it's a shameful yeah. thing, Lobster the head. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I popped for the music. Uh, yeah. Like, only because it was, it was nice. less of, that it's a good song, more I just enjoy the meme of it all. Oh, yeah. It takes me back to a, a much simpler time of Twitter mm. when the funniest thing in the world was someone says, then I think this song sounds like too many limes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got a video promo of Sami Zayn winning the IC Championship, and then we got Triple H coming out for a promo. As soon as he came out, I was like, do you reckon it's a new era? <laughs> and then Michael Cole said, we're in the Triple H era. I'm like, are we now? But we're not. We're in the Paul Triple H Levesque era. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, 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 I don't think Triple H needs to be in this segment. No, I don't think so. I, I, I get it. I get it. It's a new era. Yeah. And and I and he is the focal point of that new era. Yep. So I, I fully understand you wanting to go out there and enjoying that crowd adulation. Mm -hmm. I, I totally get all of that. But it's not like at the end of the segment, I was like, I got why Triple H was there. I think it's just because new era. So anything that's new, we everybody, just so you know, Triple H did this. Not Vince. Triple H. He's the guy who's making all these choices. However... I'm quite happy for Triple H to be out there because of what he did. Mm -hmm. Segment could have been five minutes shorter. Oh my god, it could have been shorter. <laughs> it was so long. But what this was was to say it's a new era, and with a new era, we need new tag belt, a mm -hmm. new tag team division, and that is going to be headed up by the Awesome Truth, who are the mm -hmm. current Raw tag team champions. Awesome Truth come out, and Triple H is going to congratulate Truth on getting his WrestleMania moment, and they will for from now on be known as the World tag team champions so this is something that uh i think many people had sort of figured was going to be the case mm -hmm. of once they split the belts up they were going to unbrand them for raw and smackdown because that's been an albatross around those belts in the same way the raw and smackdown women's championship was an albatross around those belts and world tag team champions made so much sense because you've got the world heavyweight championship the women's world championship and on smackdown i would imagine they'll be called the wwe tag team championships yep. because you've got the wwe championship and the wwe women's championship mm -hmm. so just I, I think a lot of people figured that would make sense and that's exactly what they've done so great yeah yeah big thumbs up from me and we've got new belts which do look like toy versions of the men's world title like a proper like like kiddie versions of them they're kind of they get a little cute yeah but they are a incredible improvement over those old belts. I think that this is one of the biggest upgrades in title history. I'd agree with that. And having said that, they are fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think on TV you can't see all the detail that's mm -hmm. on them. But like once they release the high res images of them, you can see it's like, oh, actually, there's some quite nice stuff here. Yeah. The problem is much like the main world title is because you've got the gaudy logo sort of front and center of it. That's kind of where the eye goes to. So you don't notice all the nice stuff around it. I'd also say it looks like it doesn't have any depth. Like on TV camera, it looks very flat. Whereas a lot of like the intricate design work would be better if it was like plated out more so you can mm -hmm. see a bit of the depth in it but it just looks very like plain like mm -hmm. you said because on tv you couldn't pick up some of the details that were in the in the belt work they're fine belts so much better than the old belts. so much so better so much better than those oh old my belts. god so much better so like i'm i'm beyond thrilled yeah that we have these new tag belts like 15 years mm -hmm. we had those penny belts Oof. 15 years mm -hmm. man that's far too long for a belt design especially one that's that rubbish yeah uh so yeah i'm, I'm very pleased about that and then <laughs> miss said we're gonna elevate the tag division lol uh and truth thought the triple h was tomaso champa mm -hmm. and yeah this sort of went on and on and it didn't really get over with the live crowd it did, and he said that well, where's triple h and they were like no he's here and he goes oh but where is he and they said, nah, he's here. And then he goes, whoa, where is he, though? Oh, he's here. And it was that for a long time. Yeah, I think this this would have benefited from um, jokes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a punchline, certainly. I, there was one where he said, you can't fool me, Tommaso Ciampa. And the crowd went, uh... I That's guess, the I one punchline. I, I guess that is a punchline. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in fairness to you, I guess that is a punchline. Yeah. Um, but I think this, this would have benefited from five minutes less. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this did this did not get over with the live crowd, uh, nor the audience of one of me at home. Yeah, um, but it's fine. But it's new fine. tag belts. It's new tag belts. That's the positive to take away from this. New yeah. tag belt designs. They are now the world tag team champions, and we're going to crown new number one contenders in our next match, which was DIY taking on New Day and the Creed Brothers, which had a little 
glitch on screen with a uh, QR code. Uh, I've written here, I'll presume that's an Uncle Howdy thing. Twitter will tell me later. Yep. It was. Um, and yeah, this was. I, I know that I, as soon as this happened, and I knew I was doing this show with Pete today, I was like, Pete is going to be so thrilled with this match. And why are you thrilled with this match, Pete? It's because they did a proper tag team triple threat match. It was a triple threat. So you could only tag your tag partners. And it had three legal people at once, one per team. I wrote all in caps, five-star show, <laughs> five-star match. It, it's so much better than the other ones. Because why would you ever tag out not your partner? It, it's so stupid. Whatever. It's, it's a long-standing thing within wrestling that if you do a three-way tag match, there's only two people in the ring at any one time. Or if you're four-way, it's just two people in the ring at mm. any one time. I remember doing, we had Matthew Rainwald on the show. And he was talking about when they did this with... Um, and he was working with Rusev Day. Mm. And they did a pay-per-view where they did a four-corners tag match. And there were four... Each of the tag yeah. partners was in the ring. Yeah. And he said it was a nightmare to coordinate. Yeah, I don't and, care about that. <laughs> and the reason why they just do the two people in the ring mm-hmm. while the other team's on the outside is because, well, that's easier to work out. That's mm-hmm. easier to block out when you're figuring out this match. Doing it this way is like, well, now I have to figure out two triple threat matches mm-hmm. and then ever-changing triple threat matches. But so, which is why they did this. But I think it just makes way more sense. This it's way. so much more sense. I I love this version so much more because for me, it keeps the pace up so much more. It's pacey as well. So pacey because when you have a regular triple threat, you can fall into the trap of having one person on the outside and two people in the ring. And typically, in the last year or so, WWE haven't done that when they don't do in triple threat matches, and that's good because it keeps the pace up and you have a lot of it fun interactions with the three people that are there. In tag matches, you do that, but you also have people that can tag in to keep the pace up, to keep people fresh, etc. And people can just go yeah, constantly. It's so much better. And this was real fun. Yeah, like, It's DIY New Day in the Creed. Like, yeah. This was all always going to be really good and this was really really good crowd was super into it as well like i, I popped kind of massive when uh, kofi kicked out a project champ it mm. kind of made me think the diy weren't winning this and in the end they did this whole thing of uh like everyone hit their finishes everyone did dives and diy hit meat in the middle almost out of nowhere yeah. while like kofi was going or was might be going for the pin i think it was doing a pin yeah yeah uh, to, to get their win so it's a regeneration x feud of awesome truth versus diy uh, I'm kind of, you know, I'm glad we had our awesome truth moment. Mm-hmm. That is the moment that I was pushing for at WrestleMania. I was like, that's the moment we should have. This whole story has been about awesome truth as well. This whole story has been about our truth and Damian mm-hmm. Priest. It should be awesome truth winning the tag belts at WrestleMania. But we, we've done that bit now. Mm-hmm. So now I think we can actually have DIY win the belts. Yeah. And DIY can have an actual push forward of this tag division. Fingers crossed. Particularly eh? with the draft coming up, and I think we can have a bit of an influx of teams. Mm-hmm. I'd probably, I'd want to move pretty deadly over to Raw, get them mixed in with this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought this was very, very good fun. And that match is taking place next week. Yeah. Which kind of makes me think that maybe DIY won't win, because mm-hmm. it's kind of quite soon. Well, maybe there'll be some schmoz interference, nonsense, judgment day. I don't know, when they're like, we need our tag belts back. And that leads to a multi-man match at Backlash. Well, that is interesting, because, I mean, we're... We we'll might as well talk about it now, but um, Finn Balor had that segment with Damian Priest mm-hmm. where Priest was like telling JD and uh, Dom, you need to go sort out Andrade. Like, mm-hmm. You know, step your game up. You never win any matches. Like, yeah. go out there and sort yourself out. And also, out. come on. I know we're down that Rhea Ripley's got injured, but we're the judge we're the day, judge damn it. Day. Yeah, come we, on. we run Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Let's, like, let's get together. And Finn yeah. Balor says, we should focus on winning the tag belts back. And Damian Priest, I thought you saw this really well, was like, yeah, like it's. Do you know what you oh, actually? What you should do is you need to focus on Jay mm-hmm. this week. You need to focus on tonight. You need to focus on tonight because yeah. Damien Priest has moved past those tag belts, but Finn Balor hasn't because he's not world champion right now. Nope. And so I kind of like the idea of like next week, you know, if you know the Judgment Day do get involved, but it's just Balor yes. to try and get him and Damien Priest a shot at the 100%. tag belts. Yeah, I think that's a real. That's actually some really good fun in that. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. And maybe. He actually gets it. And Priest has to go for the tag belts on that night. And maybe on the night, he's like, actually, I can't do it. I'm in my world tag match. Here's JD McDonough. And Finn's like, come on, <laughs> JD. I'm never going to win with him. The size of his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I like that a lot. Um, but I think that we've got a very good 
world ahead of us with the the world tag team titles mm-hmm. and um and this division but, you know, i mean the creeds are so great julius creed man mm. not to take anything away from brutus although that man needs to shave his sideburns mm. um i'm just so distracted by his hair i thought i told you to shave those sideburns That's all i can think of <laughs> is i look at his hair i'm just like shave those sideburns <laughs> <laughs> and um but i get nothing to, not to take anything away from brutus julius is so so good mm-hmm. you see his tweet no he tweeted out ready oh yes willing and yeah i did see that one it's happening it's gonna happen i told take it back it's not gonna be judgment day interference it's gonna be creed brothers interference and they're gonna join chad and everyone's gonna turn heel and they're gonna make faction it's gonna be great we'll get on to that in a little bit i've got my thoughts yes. um we got a recap of punk screwing drew last week and then drew kicked over a tv watch out drew you might create some real glass from that shattering um and well, monitors did fall over, supposedly. <laughs> After all. I can't say supposedly, Pete. We've literally seen the footage now. I we saw re- monitors fall I, over. I've, I've seen it like once or twice, and then I, I closed it. I was like, I'm done. I don't need to see this <laughs> yeah. anymore. You had the Tony Schiavone. So I was like, yeah, I was like oh, why are we still talking <laughs> about this? <laughs> uh, then we had The Way taking on Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree. Uh, Indy got in a cheap shot um, uh, by distracting the referee and it gave them the win. Candice was proud of her. Yeah, so Indy kind of cheated on behalf of Candice because she's been like, oh, I don't really want to be a heel. And Candice has been trying to persuade her to do it. And then at one point, Indy distracted the ref, which means the ref didn't see the tag uh, that happened. And then while Ivy and I was getting pushed back out the ring, she hit the big boot onto Maxine while the referee's back was turned and then dragged Candace into the pin. So she fully cheated. Yeah, she fully cheated here. To, and that, to get Candace to win. That's why Candace was, was pretty pleased with yeah. her little protege who was almost seeing her way, pun intended. Um, I, I, I think I'm ready for the way in Ivy, Nile and Maxine to stop having matches. Yeah. Um, this, this has got proper like, my GM booking around it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still in a level one rivalry. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's working. I should do a call out promo next week instead. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's a couple of minutes, and that's. I think that is the the, the big problem the storyline has got is that the matches are all the same and they're only a minute and a half each. Yeah. So there's only so much you can do. And I would think from this, Indy seemed pretty pleased with herself after the match. Yeah. So I think this is just a heel turn. They're now heels. Yeah. No or, more of the subtle, like, oh, I don't want At to. least it is yes. the next step of it. Like, I don't yeah. feel that Indy has gone fully healed, but she is sort of like, oh, I tried that, and it did work out for me because I tried not cheating last week and I lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got a video of Chad doing some training. Um, yeah. I, I thought it was an interesting idea. It was like, look, you're going to be going in tonight against a, a, a Montreal crowd who are going to be very much behind your opponent. Like, how are you going to deal with that? And it was like, hey, look, when I trained for the Olympics, I was a Minnesotan in a... Ohio, sure, uh, Georgia, yeah, uh, setting, and then the crowd were against somewhere me where he's not from. Somewhere where, yeah, where uh, the opposite of what a Minnesota is. <laughs> and he was, he was there, and I thought that was actually a really nice way to, to tie like real world history into this uh, kayfabe setting. Mm-hmm. Like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, we then had Andrade taking on Dominic Mysterio. Uh, great heat for Dom mm. throughout this match. And then he did a Canadian destroyer on the apron to set up a near fall outlaw mud show. Am I right? Uh, and Andrade uh, hit the hammerlock DDT for the win. JD McDonough. No, he didn't. He did a double underhook spinning neck breaker. Uh, yes. Thank yeah, yeah. you very much, Luke. I, like the man in orthopedic shoes, I stand corrected yes. uh, on that one. On that note, actually, mm. we had a conversation on the show last week about. Um, mania numbers versus tv numbers and i was kind of like in my old mindset of like well more people watch the tv show than bought the pay-per-views mm. that is me just being an old man mm. um and then we kind of look at you see what the wrestlemania numbers were and i was like oh no i was just hugely wrong so i stand corrected on that one i was i was very much wrong on that one mm-hmm. um but I, i'll stand corrected on, on your points as well he won with his new finish yes which is the not the hammerlock ddt yes double uh, underhook spinning Neckbreaker, suplex, yeah, suplex, yeah, some that. Little spinny boy. Uh, and then JD McDonough attacked after the match, and Ricochet made the save. Ah, uh, yep, yeah. Ricochet made the save. I was thinking of a different segment and was going to make a point that is incorrect because it didn't happen in this one. Okay, yep, yeah. so I'll save that for later. Cool. Uh, d- decent little match. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love Andrade spinning elbow. Still one of my favorite moves oh, in wrestling. It's, yeah, it's great. I love it. He also did it. Andrade did that split legged moonsault thing as well, mm. but it just looked like he slipped. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, like he went, whoa. So, so convincing was the slip that Pat McAfee was like, oh, I thought he slipped. 
we got a recap of the Bloodline story from SmackDown with the debut of Tamatonga as our uh, resident Bloodline expert, mm -hmm. uh, Pete. Uh, I gave my thoughts on this on the SmackDown podcast yesterday. Do you make of the Tamatonga debut in this civil war within the Bloodline? Thumbs up from me. Watch out! It's giving me a spike there. I know. Yeah, uh, it's real. It's real good. Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited for it. Because we had Kathy Kelly talking to Jey Uso uh, about Tamatonga's debut, mm -hmm. and uh, he was kind of like, I, "This is why I wanted Jimmy to come with mm -hmm. me. This is why I wanted Jimmy to get out of this world." And kind of, it, I feel like this is now going to be what pulls Jay back into this: is is having to go and save his brother, and that's going to do the reformation of the Usos, teaming again with Roman. Uh, we were pitching war games mm -hmm. uh, of the Usos, Roman and Sammy as like one of the like crikey bloodline OGs versus the the, the wolf pack mm. of Solo, Tama, Jacob Fatu and Rikishi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can lay if they can get him. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Paul yeah. Heyman. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Paul Heyman on a pole match. <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're all on board for this? Yeah. Because I, I thought I it was so. a great angle. It's a great angle. And I think that the thing that's always appealed to me about the Bloodline story is the the drama and the not knowing what everybody's motivations truly are. You know, that's always been like, a, okay, Roman's playing a game. What's his end goal? Jay's got his motivations. Why doesn't he like Sammy? What's his, his motivations of this? And blah, blah, blah. And then this time it's like, okay, Solo has his motivations. What does he want at the end of this? Is he just taking control? Who's he taking orders from? Where does Heyman lie in all of this? I thought it was really good. A yeah. lot of intrigue from that angle. Uh, we didn't have and also Jimmy was just out of the blood, which is good for him because he wasn't doing very well mm. in there. No. I should have left, <laughs> not gone back. Uh, we then have Chelsea Green and Piper Niven taking on the Party Girls. Uh, Green and Niven, uh, Green and Niven, Green, Green and Niven got the win, yep. and they put over the Niven did most of the work. Sure did. In total, about five minutes of women's wrestling, yeah. all of which was pretty inconsequential. Yeah, I think that's a pretty appalling state of affairs. I, I think that on a three-hour broadcast, you can do much better. Because mm -hmm. even, I, I sure you could point to this and be like, well, the, the women's world champion had to vacate her belt. So maybe that, I don't think there's going to be anything else. Because Rhea wasn't wrestling on week-to-week -week TV. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they would have had much else planned for this. But I think you can do better than five minutes mm -hmm. of wrestling. Both of which were, by some distance, the shortest matches on the show. I think you can do better. I agree. Uh, we then had the Liv Morgan interview that we spoke about earlier. And then Cody Rhodes cut a promo. Dave Meltzer was saying on Wrestling Reserve Radio, this was sort of the farewell promo for Cody on Raw. Because he did say in this promo, it was like, I, I'm actually a SmackDown guy now because mm -hmm. I'm the SmackDown champion. Um, but that doesn't mean I can't come to Raw every now and again. Yeah. But yeah, so going to what Meltzer was saying is this is the, the farewell promo for, for Cody on Raw as he goes to be SmackDown full time. And he thanks Seth said Seth's at home watching this. Uh, he talked about The Rock and said that I think The Rock's got more matches in him and he well, makes me bleed. Well, you're going to bleed with me. And talked about how Roman was nowhere to be seen on the, the bloodline angle. And he then brings out Jey Uso. And what Meltzer was saying was that it was a way to say goodbye to Raw and also endorse Jey Uso because he is now going to be the top guy, the top baby face on the show mm -hmm. because... Punk's out of action, mm -hmm. Seth's taking time off, and Cody's going to Raw. Yep. They're going to SmackDown, rather. Yep. So by de facto, Jey Uso now has to be the number one baby face on the brand. Yep. Cool. I... Yep. <laughs> I thought... I was like, why have they brought Cody out to say nothing? Because I thought he was going to be like, anyway, here's Jey Uso, and then he comes out and Cody leaves. But there was a little bit more after it, and I was like, okay... I see what they're trying to do here. Some cuteness, I suppose. Yeah. It's until we eat again. Until we eat again, which I did laugh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I laughed at it. Um, uh, it's actually a, quite a, a nice little moment. You know, they won the tag belts together and all that stuff. So it's not like out yeah. of nowhere. It's not just like, I like Jey Uso now. Here he is. And it had a purpose to it and, yeah. and all that stuff. It was nice. Got Cody on the show as well. Yeah. Um, I've written my notes here. They are friends. Yes, they are. We then had Kathy interviewing Nia Jax, is where she had that moment of... There are Nia two Math. <laughs> two types of people in this world. And then we had Jey Uso and Finn Balor. Balor attacked Jay from behind. Uh, they had a decent little match. Jay mm -hmm. hit the spear and the splash for the win. Yeah. Uh, Priest was watching backstage. 
and looked like he was going to come out and interfere, but didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and then afterwards, he's staring down Jay. Rest of Judgment Day come out and attack um, uh, Jay. And then Priest is like, oh, come on, guys. Why are you attacking Jay for? That's... Come on. So he wasn't happy with them beating up Jey Uso. I mean, I wouldn't be happy either. They had a three or one advantage. Jey still got away. Jey got away. Crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that's going to be an interesting little wrinkle there for the Judgment Day. Uh, I don't think that we're long for this group no. together much, especially with uh, Damian Priest as world champion. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see us having a Priest Balor match for that title. Um, but I mean, whatever the next, maybe King of the Ring or. Clash at the Castle. Clash at the Castle. Clash is a good shout, depending well, on what they're doing. The bank. Well, depends on what they're doing with Drew, I suppose. If Drew's oh, going so for many the things. world title. Yeah. Um, and then we had this awesome... So this is great. I mean, this is Love what this. a lot of people are talking about, because this is a rad little bit of production. Yes. This is really, really great. So you had Jay walking up through the crowd, and he walks through the concourse, and he's walking like through the building, and fans are there like going nuts for him, and Jay's like all pumped up and excited. I thought Tamatonga was going to jump him. Mm. I was like, man, we're, we're watching. I'm following Jay for quite some time mm. here. Like, is we're going to see Solo or uh, whoever it is? And no, it's just Jay kept walking. A fan jumped into his way to take a selfie, and Jay literally was like, get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to be here. He literally yeeted. Hey, and so pushed him out of the way. Not like, the, the full extent of yeah. Um, and then he walked outside the building. And was surprised to see Sami Zayn. He was like, oh, hello. What are you doing here? Why are you stood outside the building? Why was Jay leaving the building? Go back to the locker room, Jay. And <laughs> <laughs> Showers are that way, dummy. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, and Sami was like, yeah, I came to this building 25 years ago to see a wrestling event. And mm-hmm. here I am now, and I'm going to be the main event of that show with uh, as a singles champion. Mm-hmm. And Jay sort of hyped him up. And Sami did the walk back. And he talked about this being like hollow ground for him. So hollowed, he pushed a bin over. Yeah. Come on, Sammy. <laughs> he walked through the concourse and he walked out into the crowd as his music was playing. And it was awesome. So all in fun. All in one camera shot. It's like four minutes long. It's, it's a lovely little touch that WWE has done. In an era, or, you know, say in the old era, where you could criticize like, there were 18 camera cuts in the 20 seconds that this was on screen. This is four minutes, all one shot. It's so much more impactful. And because they're selling out these buildings, this was not a setup, but it more or less was, um, that you can just show how grand and the scale of WWE shows at the moment. It's so cool. It's rad. Yeah, this was... This is so, so good. Mm-hmm. I saw like some people being like, man, like every wrestling show should do this. It's like, well, every wrestling show doesn't have these audiences, like right? these crowds. Like you can't do this. You can do this when this building is full because you get that shot of everything mm-hmm. being full. When it's Sammy in Montreal, you can do it, right? Mm-hmm. Can't do it every week, for sure. But when you have that opportunity, when you have someone who's as over as Sammy in a town like Montreal, in his hometown, go for it. Yeah. And it, it looks awesome. And the thing is, the more and more you show people caring about these people, just from like a Pavlovian response, we then care more. Oh, yeah. When we see people care, we care more. That's just how viewership things work. That's why dead crowds on a show really kill the atmosphere. Because even if you're having a good time and the crowd is dead, you're like, eh, you know, something's mm. missing, not quite right. When a crowd's into it, you're like, yeah, uh, cool. I was yeah, it's great. super excited for this main event as well. Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Championship. It was given like 20 minutes of TV time as well. So this was like given time. It was a match with about 17 and a half minutes. So mm-hmm. it was given its time to get over. And boy, howdy, did it ever. I thought Sami's selling of his knee throughout the match was, was really, really great. Particularly when he went for the sharpshooter in Montreal. But he couldn't do it because mm-hmm. his leg gave out. I thought that was some really, really good drama to this. I thought that he wasn't going to be able to do the halluva kick because of the the knee, but he powered through that pain to hit the halluva kick and pinned Chad Gable. The German suplexes in this. Uh, so me and Tempest were having a bit of a, a giggle about uh, on collision in the match between Garcia and uh, Angelico. They did a yay boo spot with a figure four. Mm. So Garcia looked in the figure four. Yeah. And then Angelico, or Angelico as he now likes to be called, Reverse the pressure for it to be a boo. Yeah. And then Garcia reversed it to be a yay. They did actually a yay boo spot. They did yay boo spots with German suplexes. Yeah. And like standing switches and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, th- I thought this was great. Really, really good main event. This was really fun. And I also like that Gable was very close to winning on multiple occasions. Like he had that ankle lock in for a while. And Sammy nearly made the ropes drag him back, get it mm. in deeper. It was like, oh, Jesus. Okay. Gable's like doing really well here. But then the thing that flipped it 
was the same finish that they had in the gauntlet match, where Sammy rolls him up from the ankle lock, rolls him up into a pin. Chad kicked out this time, so he learned a bit more, but that allowed in Sammy enough momentum to come back in to then hit the Haluva kick and win. So it's still that thing of Sammy getting out of the ankle lock that is the reason that Gable lost. So it's the same thing. He's learning a bit, but he's not learned enough yet yeah. to counter Sammy properly. And that, I think, is going to be crucial when they get to the rematch later. Because after the match, Chad Gable raised Sammy's hand and then he left. Briefly. And Sammy was celebrating with his family when all of a sudden Chad returned and he hit a German suplex on the outside and he battered Sammy around the ring and then he sort of like had him over the ropes and was locking the ankle lock in. A full-on heel turn for Chad Gable. This is what a lot of people have been theorizing and predicting was going to happen since the gauntlet match leading up into WrestleMania. Some people thought it would happen at Mania and lead up to Mania. But it's happened now. Chad Gable has turned heel. I feel like I'm the only person in the room who was not on board for a Chad Gable heel turn. And my reasoning for that is I think we there was still mileage left in the tank for the babyface run. And the reason why there was so much mileage is because we didn't do any miles. We had that awesome Gunther match last year. We had this incredible, organic babyface fight. And the crowd was so super hot. The hard work, the work that Chad Gable and Otis as well, actually, like through their, the Viking stuff that they were doing, was so great. He was so beautifully, organically over as a top, potentially tippity top guy. And they just did nothing. And he just became a tag guy that lost on TV again. Until we got to the gauntlet match where all of a sudden he was like, oh yeah, I'm going to face Gunther and this means more to me because, where is it? The kid cried. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't like, I just feel we could have had more from this. So I know that everyone's been theorizing like we can do, I know you got Perk Gable and cause people, Perk Angle, I don't even know what this means, but I know a lot of people call Kurt, like, Kurt Angle mm -hmm. when he was in TNA Perk Angle. Yeah. I don't know what it means, but people are saying, you know, the, the comparisons to it. But I was like, we, could, we still had babyface chad that we could have done something with and the only answer we had was i turn him heel i guess i'm gonna disagree with you there because while i do think they could they absolutely should have made more of the momentum they gained when they and had the initial chad gable gunther run you had something with gable and you didn't use it what an error should have done more with that then going into mania <clears throat> they could have done just done well we'll just do chad gable again and do what we had before but three months later for me, that wouldn't have worked as well because you took that three-month break. You you had your chance, and now you, you'd you have to reheat him again to get him to Absolutely, that point, yeah. um, which they didn't take. But I think all that work that they did in the initial Gunther run and then in the bit before Mania, him losing to Sammy, training Sammy, etc., leads more into this heel turn than another babyface run because they didn't do the babyface run the first time, which is an error. I agree with you on that bit. But now, this story of Gable wanting that IC title back, losing to Sammy, training Sammy, and then losing to Sammy again in this one when he has his opportunity now, feels into, what am I supposed to do now? That kind of despondent Chad Gable, I think, lends itself to a really good story. And that work isn't squandered. That work that they did with Gunther before and that run into Mania isn't lost because he's now a heel. It fuels the heel turn. It makes it more interesting to me. I, I take your point, and I don't necessarily disagree with you. I think the problem I have with it is that, well, there is a four-month gap where nothing happens. Because mm -hmm. there is the Gunther match, then nothing, and then the Mania build. Mm -hmm. So I, I still have a feel like I've, I've earned... Like I've 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 earned this, uh, or uh, they've earned this heel turn, or I should like be so invested in this heel turn because, well, I didn't have enough of the babyface thing to make this heel turn so like to really mean something. I get doing it because, well, it's he's already we've already got a top baby face in in Sami Zayn in this division, so we can't have two of them. May as well have a heel in there instead. And it's not going to be Gunther's not going to be coming back for a while. So, and this will be a great program. And also, we should say it's going to be awesome because mm -hmm. Chad's great, yeah. and I think Chad is going to kill it in this role, particularly if he's going to have this like training academy, like a serious Alpha Academy that is. Akira Dazawa posted up on Twitter like, "Oh yeah, I'm with you. You're my, mm -hmm. you're my like my master. Like I'll mm -hmm. do whatever you say." The idea of the creeds being involved in this, I think you got some really great stuff in there. So I'm not saying that is uh, it's not anything to be excited about. I am excited about that. I think what I'm more is I, I'm gutted that we didn't get anything 
from what could have been a potentially great babyface run that I think then would have made this heel turn even more impactful. I think there's still time to do that babyface run after this heel run. <laughs> Because I, 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 see, I, I, yeah, I, I guess like, there's always time to do more things. But then again, yeah. like at the same time, there was more time to do this heel turn later. Yeah, on, they that, on that same token. But I think that this story works for this. Like that, that babyface run going into the heel turn for me, it's not just like, well, I want a babyface and I'm not getting babyface. We're sad. It's just like this is a really compelling story for Chad Gable as a character. I'm invested in the character of Chad Gable and him losing it when he doesn't when he feels like he should he earned this thing and he can't get it i love seeing characters that just kind of spiral from it mm -hmm. so maybe i'm just more invested in the hill turn because i love these kind of characters personally but coming back from this and chad going into a new program where he becomes very serious drop all the goofy nonsense give me serious chad gable because that's all i've wanted for a very long time is he's a very good wrestler uh babyface or heel just make him serious and now we get this if he then wins the Intercontinental title because he finds this killer instinct that he didn't have before, maybe with the assistance of the Creed or whoever, right? Wins the IC belt. I want to see him go on that run, then drop it, then turn babyface again. Because then you get serious babyface Chad Gable, which is always the end goal that I wanted. I suppose my, uh, my final thing to say is like, I would agree with you if this had been longer than six weeks. Fair. Because the Gauntlet match was, what, like three weeks out from Mania? Yeah, or and two, one or two. Yeah. It was three weeks out because then the week after that was Sami Zayn asking Chad, yep. why don't you believe in me? The yep. week after that was Chad training, training Sami, which we didn't really see the full results of. Then uh, Gunther beat him. Then it was last week. So yeah, it's only like five, six weeks that the story mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And I think that the story you're saying there is a really good one that is longer than six weeks of story. I don't think I th so. I think, you, I think you needed more time on this. I don't think that's true, because I think while there was a big old four-month gap, it's still history. It's still history you pull on, in the same mm. way that wrestling yeah, yeah. is a, a long time yeah, yeah. that you pull on history for with forever. And you, you pull on that history, and you go into this WrestleMania thing where Chad was like, okay, well, I had my four-month vacation, whatever he was doing. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> but now he's like, all right, Intercontinental title time, let's go, and then loses the gauntlet match. And that feeds into, well, I lost against Gunther multiple times, because uh, that wasn't just one Gunther match. That was multiple Gunther matches. And then, and then they, had the one, they, had the, they had one match the, for the title. Didn't they have more than that? No, they, the match that led up to it was because he beat him by counter, and that was like Gunther's first loss. Right. And that was to set up them having... Right, yeah. yes. Uh... Regardless, getting into to this period then, he's like, now's my time, loses the gauntlet match, and then trains Sammy to beat Gunther, which maybe he takes maybe he's got a bit of ego and being like, Well, I'm the reason why Sammy won. Absolutely, you should etc. Yeah. Uh and then can't even beat Sammy on his own afterwards. I think the heel turn heel turn makes perfect sense. And while I agree that they should have capitalized more beforehand, in the same way that you shouldn't have had the rock interrupt and steal the spot from Cody. You've done it now, so pivot. And this is, well, you didn't do the four-month thing, so now you've got a better idea here. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, so perhaps then to sum up my thoughts then is that I think this is a three out of five heel turn that could have been a five out of five heel turn if you had not just stopped for a while. Mm. Like, I think there's a real... Like, what you're saying there is a very good compelling story, and that is the story they have told. But there is a better version of that story that they had the opportunity mm -hmm. to do, yeah. but didn't do. See, this is like the opposite of the... Cody Rock thing, where I feel like I was arguing the opposite side, of being like, "Yeah, I mean, I guess it's good, but they didn't need to do it," you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, now I'm arguing the other side. Yeah, because I think it is a it's a it's a justified heel turn. It is a very good story mm. with compelling characters. There was just a much better way to do it that they could have done mm -hmm. because they had everything there in place. They just opted not to do it, and yeah. I feel that I feel that they did not take enough advantage of the good that you could have had coming out of this. That's fair. However, you can now take advantage of the great that will come out of it. Yep. Because what will come out of this is heel Chad Gable going and run will probably win the IC title. Hope so. Like my my if I'm going to fancy book something here, I would say that it's um it's an Iron Man match. Yes. At a at backlash. Oh, so a thirty minute Iron Man match. Yeah. If you really want to relive like the Benoit angle stuff, like yeah, do a do a thirty minute Iron Man match on pay per view against Chad Gable and and Sami Zayn. That is awesome. Like that. I'm, I'm forty five minutes. 
Let's go. Let's go. A bit further. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do the give, full. Give him a bit more. So you don't want to do the full hour. No, no, no. That'll take up too much time. <laughs> forty-five minutes though. Sweet spot. Forty-five minutes, I suppose, is a little sweet spot. Yeah. So they don't often do forty-five no, minutes. No, it's, but it's either it's either half or the full hour. I don't know if you've heard like it's new era. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I can, you know, I've seen some people say like, "Oh, it's Luke just hating on WWE again." But like, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I tell you, I'm not. Yeah. And, and I think if you have listened to this show and I think I'm hating on WWE, then you're not listening. Yeah. Because I think this is good. I just think it could have been better. Um. But I think there's there's some really great stuff that can come out mm-hmm. of this. I'd also say great idea to turn him heel in Montreal. Exactly. Like this is it's because that's the time to do it because yeah. it's going to be in front of the right crowd. And like, in fact, today he did a German suplex on Sammy while he was hugging his wife. Like, Great you spot. You don't want to do this in Minnesota. No, nah, God no. <laughs> no. Where he might get cheered. Yeah. yeah. Or the other place where he got booed. <laughs> well, no, maybe you do want to do it in the other place where he got booed. <laughs> because they would have booed him more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. I, absolutely right. This is the time to do it because it's in Montreal. Yeah. And that's going to be the best crowd to get the best reaction out of it. Mm-hmm. But overall, I thought this was a, a, a good edition of Raw. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I gave it a three out of five mm-hmm. uh, in the edited review. But the wrestling up and down the show was... It's okay, pretty good, yeah. but like the main event was was real, real good. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like sucks about Rhea Ripley. Yeah, sure does. But um, I th- but I think that they have got an opportunity now to do something really great with Liv Morgan off the back of it. Mm-hmm. I think this is you can take a really good silver lining out of a very bad situation. Hundred percent. In the same way that Chad Gable turned here, <laughs> get something really great out of your own errors of not yeah. capitalizing <laughs> on babyface Chad Gable. Okay, that's it. I like this, Pete. Yeah. And I, I should be taking your approach now. I should be yeah. looking for the silver lining in mm-hmm. their bad storytelling. I should yes. be looking for the silver lining of what good can be coming out of it. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I stand corrected on everything I said. Yeah, I think that's actually <laughs> a much better way of looking at it. I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, give a special shout out to some of our Patreon backers over at patreon.com forward slash rest talk. Once I have found the list of people, head on over to patreon.com. Breaking Patreon numbers at the moment, our own Patreon numbers, that is, uh, through the Monday Night War and Wrestle Talk Extra and new Thunderdome editions of Survival Series, exclusive episodes of Survival Series over at patreon.com forward slash Wrestle Talk. Get early access to the Monday Night War, mm. uh, the booking podcast where we talk about behind the scenes bits and pieces. And next week will be the next edition of Wrestle Talk Extra, Ooh. where. Ollie and I will be reviewing, quite timely, I might add, the episode of Monday Night Raw where the Shield break up. Ooh. Where Seth Rollins does that chair shot. The yeah. chair shot that is referenced mm-hmm. within WrestleMania 40. We're going to be yeah. reviewing that episode of Monday Night Raw. Mm. And let me tell you, Raw was not a good TV show <laughs> in 2014. <laughs> It's a new era. Listen, I've, I may have some of my quibbles yep. with, with uh, the, the Triple H era of Monday mm-hmm. Night Raw. It's uh, m- it's far and away better than what we used to have. Oh yeah, and it's it's sometimes it's easy to forget how bad it used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you're one of our twenty five dollar and above Patreon pledge champions, you get your name read out on the show like these fine folk, always shining. Garrett Albright, Hannah A, Baby, Jordy Bus Driver, Harry, The Gaelic Storm, Heather Murphy, The Aztec Warrior, Hector Rodriguez, Murderous James Murtaugh, Wrestle Talk's Personal Problem Solver, Jamie Donovan, Top Flight, Jared Martin, Spoken Cares Today, Jeremy Smith, John Jenkinson, Son of Jenka, The Singing Luchador, Joseph Santana, and finally, Finally, for this Hall of Fame class of the 16th of April, I forgot what month we're in, it's April 2024, the Saint, Joshua Peters. Thank you all so much for being our wonderful Pledge Hammers on Patreon, and a big thank you to this episode sponsor, the Wrestling Masterclass. Here's more about that. Ever dreamt of breaking into the professional wrestling business as a wrestler, promoter, booker, commentator, referee, journalist, podcaster, YouTube star, or another key role? Wrestling Masterclass is a historic online course featuring over 70 HD video lessons, podcasts, and seminars with some of the world's top wrestling experts, both in the ring and behind the scenes, including Will Ospreay, Raven, Dutch Mantel, Doug Williams, Mike Kyoda, and so many more. Start your journey today at WrestlingMasterclass.com. Click the link in the video description down below. Check out the Wrestling Masterclass. This is the best way to get involved in the world of professional wrestling. Even if you just want to learn more about the world of professional wrestling, this has got hours upon hours and hours of seminars, podcasts, great insight, worksheets to be able to do as well to 
get you more clued into this mm -hmm. world. Like if you're looking to get in as a commentator, there's courses on that. If you want to get in as a referee, there's courses on there with podcasts with Mike Kyoda about like what it takes to be a referee. That that one, by the way, I thought was fascinating. I learned mm -hmm. quite a lot from that one about the role of a referee and how referees should appear on TV. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the thing as well. It's not just like, I want to be a referee, therefore I'll learn the referee bit. It's just like, no, you just learn more about wrestling as a whole, how wrestling functions. It's like a total, total package look at, at everything. And there's even how to get involved in wrestling YouTube, right? Uh, hosted by Ollie Davis. He does a little podcast seminar on that about how he got involved and what his lessons that he's learned over the years. So yeah, it's a, it's a, a great, great service. Go check them out. Click the link in the video description down below. We have a result of our poll of who should win the title next week. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Liv Morgan in a runaway win here. 64% of the vote. Roxanne came in second with 13%. Jade in uh, third with 11 And Nia last with 10 I wouldn't do Jade, personally. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'd make no sense right now to have a win. I think it would be a bit premature. Uh, I knew that our moderators would come through uh, and help us here by explaining the Minnesota thing. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, Chad said Iowa. I only know that from the Slipknot album. Um, um, the state next to Minnesota and college sports rivals in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, they both suck, though, on Wisconsin. I only know Wisconsin through that 70 show. Yep. Big Ten Conference um, sounds like a media thing. <laughs> You know, Disney unveiled the new trailer for Deadpool 3 at the Big Ten. At the Big Ten. Yeah. Uh, Cody Moody here said, the tag titles, why are they still coins? <laughs> They're not coins now. Well. Not not as much coins anyway. They don't look like pennies. They're circular. They're circular. They still are circular, but yeah. I don't know if I'd still say they're pennies or coins. Uh, are they really better than the old ones? Yes. Does that mean they're good? No. Uh, why the insistence on keeping them circles? The dual plating is nice, but I have a bad feeling. ATDU... ATDU? Oh, oh a, a, a Town Down Under. I was going to say Austin Theory <laughs> Down Under. Drayson Oala. <laughs> uh, a Town Down Under will get identical belts with swap plating. No, they will get belts that will look like the, the Uwu Champion. Which are going to look worse. Because <laughs> they're just going to be big WWE logo. <laughs> they will look like children's toys. <laughs> um, I, don't get, I don't like the globe with the WWE logo design. They started with the IC belt, then the world titles, now the tag belt. It's like so y'all don't like the logo taking up 80% of the belt? Cool, but we can't be too original. Mm. Yeah, like, I don't... Talked about this with uh, the when they unveiled the world title. I don't like the big gaudy logo in the middle, but it's branding. And I think it's important that you get the branding out there. It's important for them. Well, yeah. That's I, what, don't, that's, I don't care well, about that's what branding. I mean. That's why I say it's important. It's important yeah. for them to have their yeah. logo front and center of it. That is the most important thing. For them. Yeah. But I can hate it. Absolutely. That was entitled to their opinion. Yeah. Um, Noshua has said, Hey guys, WWE knocked out of the park again with the J. Sammy sequence. What a transition between matches. I do, however, wish it would lead to the tributes of the masked luchador fan who I assume got trampled by the production <laughs> team on Sammy's entrance. Yeah. Jam that jam in peace. Uh, yeah. There was a few people. I did wonder how are not more people interfering with this? Because that camera just went. And there were, I assume there must have been guards and stuff getting people out of the way. I have no idea. But I should send people to be cool. Like if you like if you're the, you the, don't trust people to be cool. Yeah, you do. Like if you do this on TV shows, you just like the runners are just there, be like, okay, everyone, you're gonna stand here, just be cool, yeah. and like you know, cheer and and hoop and holler and everything like that. But don't be a div and run out in front of the wrestlers. Would never trust people to do that. Although I suppose they are Canadians, so they're nice it's supposedly. A, it's also it's a new era. So it's a new era. <laughs> it's a new era. It's a new era of fan. <laughs> where fans aren't just jumping into like you know, apart from that one guy who you know tried just, to get a selfie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jay was like, nope. Get out of here. I, was, I did see someone be like, he could have just got a high five. Yeah. And he'd have remembered <laughs> yeah, that for right? the rest of his life. Yeah. <laughs> Space Viking. Uh, the new tag belts look great, but I'm noticing synergy here. I'm just hoping they aren't getting mini W tag belts. They absolutely are. 100%. Yeah, I feel like they might do. They absolutely will. Yeah. Uh, Master Nate uh, said, uh, who would you like to see join Bo Dallas Uncle Howdy's faction and what would be a good first story for it? I'm excited to have Bo back and maybe have some of Bray's, Bray's ideas live on, but I can't imagine a story. Also, get well soon, Rhea. We'll all miss our mummy. We sure will. So yeah, I talked about this a little bit in uh, Three Count, uh, which will be coming out this Sunday. Sunday. Uh, but my kind of Wyatt Six pitch at the moment is Bo, 
and I think it's probably what everyone's pitch at the moment is, which is Bo, Braun, Eric Rowan, um, Alexa Bliss, Matt Hardy, mm -hmm. and Joe Gacy. Sure, why not? Yeah. I, I don't know who the other six would be if it's not for, for... Unless you want to put in, like, a Nikki Cross in there, for example. Sure. So you can do, like, a Nikki Cross, Alexa Bliss tag team. Mm -hmm. I would like it to be Bo, Braun, and Eric Rowan. Just the three of them? Wyatt family. Like that, to me, is, like... yeah. A trio, you know. I prefer that. Yeah, I don't. I don't mind that at all. Some guy said Jay should absolutely win the world heavyweight championship. Rhea's injury could kickstart the Judgment Day falling apart without her, and I think Drew's eventual championship win would be better if he beats Jay instead of Priest. It's an interesting point because it's a I good point. It's actually not wrong. Yeah, but I'm not. I don't think we're quite ready to get rid of Damian Priest title run just yet. Only because I don't think he's been elevated up to that world title position. No, yet. he hasn't. But we do need some quick title reigns because we've had so many long ones. That's now. what Triple H likes. He likes a long I title know, reign. which is why you can't do it all the time. Otherwise, it's not special when you do long ones. Uh, Kendall here said, honestly, give the belt to Nia. I think keep Liv face for now. And you can take the heat off Liv by having her eventually be the one to dethrone Nia, who the world loves to hate. Rhea returns and beats her and Liv loses her mind afterwards. I think the crowd are going to turn on Liv regardless. I think now's the time. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I, I think you're right. Like it's... I just don't think this crowd are going to... I know there are some people, you know, morons, who are taking this very personally and are attacking Liv online for injuring Rhea Ripley. But, you know, they're, they're absolute twats, so you can't, like, pay attention mm -hmm. to them. But I think the vast majority of the crowd are turning on her in a kayfabe sense. Yes. So I think now's the time to just pull the trigger on it. Yeah. I will say, you could have done a lot more with Liv Morgan as a babyface, but now you turn her heel because that's the right thing to do for the story. Mm -hmm. Just saying. That could be applied to other stories in <laughs> WWE. Could have done more as babyface. But now the story makes sense to turn him heel. Pete, I would completely agree with you as a, as a comparison piece if we'd have pressed pause on this Liv Morgan story for four months. And, <laughs> I mean, I and, think it was paused for like a year. Well, that's because she was injured, <laughs> Pete. <laughs> And they haven't. They brought it back and done a different story <laughs> yeah, instead. that's true. Martial arts. Uh, thought Gable would turn on Sammy at Mania, joining Imperium so they could finally have an American again, like that Thatcher. No, Thatcher's British. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Timothy Thatcher's English. Ah, uh, don't do that. What do you mean? Uh, he's not, though, is he? he so, of course he is. No, he's not. I've never seen a more English-looking man. <laughs> Um, this actually makes me more excited about Backlash. Hope they'll do something with it. Agreed. Oh, yeah, I think they're going to do a big, big time match with Sammy and Chad at Backlash. I just want Wrestling Machine Chad Gable. That's all I want. Okay, can I um, can I present to you uh, Sat's take on this? Okay. I thought it was, was, was an interesting one. I don't know if mm. I fully agree with it, but I thought mm -hmm. I'd present it. This idea of uh, making someone the new something that's old because mm -hmm. it was like his point was like i don't know why wrestling fans are obsessed with making chad gable just another kurt angle yep. rather than being the first chad gable in the same way that people want bron breaker to be the new scott steiner rather sure. than just be the new Bro the first bron baker yeah i bron, bron breaker, bron breaker. Bron breaker. Yeah. I, I don't say i'm agreeing with that i thought it was an interesting take though because that is mm -hmm. like you know when talked about it, everyone's like Wrestling Machine Chad Gable, Perk Angle, and, you know, and Perk Gable. Yeah. Well, what do you, where do you stand on that? I 100% agree with him. 100%. The, the reason I'm saying Wrestling Machine Chad Gable is just like a reference point. I'm not yeah. saying he needs to recreate everything that Kurt Angle did or anything. It is just a refer reference point to be like a serious wrestler. Yeah. That's what I want him to be. And the shorthand for that is Wrestling Machine because yeah. everyone knows that's what that means. Yeah. Uh, Will Chisholm, I actually think it was a very good point. Will Chisholm has been around, has uh, been a member for eight months in a row, said, I would send the Creed Brothers and Ivy Nile to join Chad. I don't know about Ivy, just because it feels like she's doing other stuff. Well, doing stuff. Uh, I would definitely have the Creed Brothers join, because yeah. I think they'd get a lot more. They had their really fun introduction as a babyface team on the main roster and put on some really good matches, and everyone, oh, Creed Brothers, really cool, nice. Then you turn them heel, and then they get that, the long run, kind of like, elevate them up the card as heels, then you turn them babyface later. Creed Brothers have got no issue with turning heel, right? Because they're not doing anything as babyfaces right yeah. now. Yeah, So apart from having good matches. Apart from having good matches, yeah. but you can do that as heels. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that stops that in any, exactly. in any uh, capacity.
capacity whatsoever. Ben here said, there are consequences to losing, says the man who's been on an eight-month <laughs> losing streak, plus yep. lost a dark match to Jey Uso right after SmackDown. Yep. I know heels are supposed to be hypocrites, but geez, we're supposed to take Solo as chief serious maybe eight months ago. Nonetheless, I just about jumped out of my seat when Tama showed up. Ain't nobody realer than Gorilla. <laughs> uh, hopefully they'll use, uh, let him use the gun stun. Uh, crazy to think that we might still get Jacob Fatu. Bloodline is far from dead. The Civil War next. Yep. I was like, yeah, I mean, I'd go to uh, our SmackDown review yesterday. It was where we talked about that in depth. Mm. Jacob here said, just wanted to show you guys some love. Tomorrow my wife will and I go to see WWE in Birmingham, our first show together, my first in 14 years, and it's all because WrestleTalk helped me love wrestling again. You guys are awesome. Never change. Thank you. Mayor of Painsville Dan said, hello, Luke. Hello, Pete. Hope you're doing well. Sucks for Rhea. I believe the Wyatt Six could be Rowan, Strowman, Dallas, Hardy, Cottonwood. And Cottonwood? <laughs> Cottonwood, Dan! Is he even wrestling? You out of your mind? Dan's just... Yeah, Dan's a meme now. And Loomis! Well, of course he's... Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> Might as well have said Goldust or Brian Myers. But no, he went He went real... He dug deep. Honestly, I, I don't think Dexter Loomis is a terrible shout. I do think it's a bad shout. When I said not a bad shout, I don't think it's far-fetched. I think WWE genuinely might do it. No, I think you're wrong. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even think that it's not a bad shout. I think it's just a, it's just a bad shout. I, they might, they might do it. I mean, they might do, Pete. Yeah, that doesn't mean it's a good shout though. No, a, a good, a good prediction, I should say. Not a good idea. That'll get that. A I'll, good prediction. I'll give you that. Yeah. Uh, Golden Knights fan eighty four. Hey Luke and Pete. When you hear too many limes and lobster head in Seamus theme, it's a Monda Green, a misunderstood or misinterpreted word or phrase resulting from a misheard lyric of a song. I mean, I know it's, I know we're not right. Yeah. It just sounds like it, and yeah. it's funny. I think they're just giving you, here is what that term that means. That thing means. You yeah. know, here, there's actually a word for it, which I yeah. don't think I knew. Uh, my, I think the famous one of that is um, Purple Haze by uh, Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. where it's like, excuse me while I kiss the sky. It yeah. sounds like it says, excuse me while I kiss this guy. <laughs> Uh, Wrestle Talk for life. We need to investigate the Simpsons and Wrestle Talk. They both keep predicting the future way too easily. Luke, yesterday you were talking about them needing to change the tag belts. Coincidence? I think not. No, I think it was actually quite plain as day they were going to change yeah. the tag belts. Not only that, I think Cultaholics said they were going to be doing it yeah. at some point soon. I, but like, yeah. I think the second they split those belts up, there was no way they were staying Raw and SmackDown. Mm -hmm. They'd already changed the women's ones. Yeah. Uh, Rob Steedley has been become a member, as has Milford, Wheeler Hale, and Tomo. Tomo? Craig, Tomo. that's a name. That's a blast from the past. Yeah, it's all right. Hello, like Tom, Tomo. There's a couple more as well. Brett here said, I just wanted you to know that I did email you for winning the raffle at the PFK tournament last week and I haven't heard back. Do I understand it's been busy? I just want to let you know I did reach out. Love the Gable heel turn. Liv should be new champion. We will look into that, Brett. We shall. Um, Marcel Arts here says, also need recommendations for good vegan fish and chips in London. Oh, I don't actually know. Not a clue. Sorry. No, actually, I do not know, I'm afraid. Um, I mean, you, there will be plenty of places that will do things like banana blossom, so you'll be able to get um, vegan fish and chips. Mm -hmm. Probably not from most of, like, traditional English fish and chips, Gav. No, probably not from those places. But you can certainly yeah. get them in, like, you know, uh, English pubs. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know any off the top of my head. Me neither. I don't live here anymore. Um, right, here is the poll... Uh, it is very much a thumbs up show, as is expected. 76%. It's lower than maybe I thought it was going to be. Uh, and 21% in the middle. I think that checks out. For me, that's like a four out of five show, I would say. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's probably four out of five. Yeah. yeah I, I, as I said, I gave it three in my edited mm -hmm. review because I thought it was a good show. Yeah. Yeah. Good building block show. I think, yeah. I, I would prefer a bit more wrestling on my wrestling show. Um, but stop clock. Yeah. Um, but the main event was great. Main I love the Chad awesome. Gable heel turn. So yeah, can't complain. Very very good heel turn, uh, and it does lead to some very very exciting things down the mm, line. Sure does. Uh, speaking of exciting things down the line, we are back on Thursday with the AEW Dynamite review. A stacked old card for that show. Where was that wrestling last week when we really could have needed it? Uh, Will versus Claudio. Mm. No. Yeah, I'll take that. Thank you very much. And then on Friday, myself and Oliver Davis will be doing predictions for AEW Duck Dynasty, which will be coming this Sunday. And then next Monday, myself and Oliver Davis will be reviewing that show. Until then, I've been Luke Cohen, D-A-D. -D. That has been Pete Quinnell. Jam that jam!